take off of my uh, house gutters that I put in. You'll be hard pressed to even hear it anywhere. Right. But Jeff's gonna run the diffuser out of this. So now I'm gonna trench the uh, airlines there. And he did die, and he did, uh... We say, going? Mr. Jeff. How's it going? Not too bad. You ready to rock and roll? Yes, sir. Let's get this done. I'm gonna get the excavator ready. Perfect. All right, cool. Time to roll, baby. Time to get something done. All right, so the first thing I have to do we're gonna tie into this outlet right here. So that's where the air pump's gonna go. So I gotta bring the excavator in here and clear a little path and trench two ditches for two different airlines. Cause we're gonna go one airline in this pond and one in the other pond. And then they're gonna split off from there. We say, Jeff. Just getting everything unpacked. All right. You didn't have to bring your boat, but. Oh, that's all right. I know you're used to bringing yes, it. Yes, sir, used to it, and plus it allowed me to haul everything. Texas uh, Hunter. Cool. Uh, what's the box? Is that the aerator? That's the aerator. Okay. All right, I'll get digging. Get some trenches Easy going. Pro. And then I'm going to be putting in our fourth run out the end. Cool. All right, I'm going to start digging. Beautiful. Love nice. it. So I got to find the best run in. I got this old run from taking that tree out. I think I'll go in there and take a left. Been a while since I've been in the excavator. Uh, that's for sure. Or at least it seems like it. So I gotta make this path in here. And yeah, today I don't have my good mic on. I was kind of in a rush. Jeff was on time. Actually, he was early. I like that. I like it. All right, so I'll give you a quick rundown on what we're going to do today and why. So obviously we're going to install an aerator. It's going to have four diffusers, two in each pond. Um, that's to oxygenate the pond. He called it super oxygenating it. Uh, then we're going to put some dye in it. And the dye is actually to keep the sun from growing the weeds at the bottom. So it's not really cosmetic. And then we're going to put some... Uh, I don't want to misquote it, but it's, it's some biocide or something like that for bacteria and sediment. So we're going to have a couple of changes of plans here. The, the cord on the thing was only six feet long, as you'll see here. So I ran up to the barn. I found some 10-3 outdoor. So we're going to bury the electrical trench, which is also going to save on um, the air hose because he didn't know if he had enough air hose to make this entire run. So by trenching the power, you know, 30, 40, 50 feet here, whatever it is, that's going to save on air hose. So that's going to be the change here. And then we're also putting in a fish feeder. I asked him, I said, does that help the big fish? He said, no, the big ones don't necessarily eat it, although catfish will. But as the little fish eat it, um, that provides more protein to grow the bass even bigger yet and the catfish. I'm a few feet off of my uh, house gutters that I put in a few years ago. That's it, huh? Alright, the cord's only six feet, so I gotta plan accordingly because I don't want an extension cord on it. So I might have to scooch it over a little bit. Back to that cord idea. Okay. Alright, here's a midstream look. We're basically extending this outlet. I found some direct burial from the house build. So we're gonna run it all the way down where the excavator is, and that's where the box is gonna be. First, it'll save us some airline. Secondly, it'll be a little farther from the house for less noise. So here's where the box is gonna go. I cut that little spot out. So it's gonna be sitting below grade, eh, probably eight inches, maybe 10 inches. And then we'll dress it all up to the front of that box.
All right, so now I'm going to trench the uh, airlines. Our, our uh, unit's going to go right here. I'm going to make one trench up to about here, and then I'm going to split off. And one line's obviously going to go that way, and one line's going to kind of go on the edge of the beach to go into this pond. Uh, Jeff's going to run the diffuser out. This is going to be the long one. So as he uh, takes it back, I got to just make sure the line doesn't kink and tangle right up here. So I'm going to do that with both hands. All right, so he's gonna put two diffusers out in each pond. That's the plan. Uh, he picks his depths. He's got a depth finder, and then we're gonna get this mess all cleaned up, covered up. Kind of exciting stuff. It's always been a childhood dream of mine to catch a six plus pound bass. I'd love to do it right on my own pond. Here's a midstream look. We got we got the two lines going to that pond all buttoned up and done. Now we're working on this pond. I had to cut another trench because I forgot I was supposed to share that trench. And now I'm working on putting in a power pole here and an outlet. So uh, we're making some progress. All right, we're getting close. I got a rough grade here. I'm gonna bring some good dirt in and uh, add to this whole area. Looks like our wiring is about to go hot. And soon we'll find out if we're good to go. Man, that thing looks fancy. Yes, sir. So we're gonna have to plug in for the... So here what I'm doing is I'm cutting the bottom side so that water that comes down the hill uh, can drain. Um, we did put some gravel in there um, to help with that. So that's kind of why I'm making a cut so the water comes down the hill and goes right through that aerator little pocket. Because I buried it, you know, six inches or so to help reduce the sound. All right, he just fired them up. We got two over there in that pond. And two here, that one's in the sun over there, but I could see it. Sweet. Come on, big bass. And he did dye, and he did uh, some biocide or something for bacteria. The dye is not just for color, uh, it's for weed control, and so the sun don't penetrate down for weeds. What do you say, man? Looking good. Looking I'm good. just gonna adjust this other one down here. Because we've got really good flow, really good flow, really good flow, and then not as much. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go in and I'm going to restrict this one and that one and that one to try and get more out to that one. And then, is that too deep or something? Or no, just... it's just we got so much air running through here, here, and here, it's not getting out to our farthest one. Oh, so now okay, okay. we're going to restrict some and let the air go to that what one. What do you got to do now? Pull them up and, and restrict them a little? Uh, just uh, hit the valve that's in the... The box oh there. up there each one oh, has a, okay, a control okay. valve on it so we'll just adjust it oh nice 
So this deeper one out here, he said, was about six foot deep. But the pond is down two to three feet. So that's going to be around eight-ish to nine feet when the pond is full. And the closer one, I think he went around four or five feet, but I'm not certain. All right, so this is the stuff we're using. Tritcon, I guess is how you pronounce it. So I got the feeder bolted down. He recommended this one. I told him just just get one that's gonna last. I wanna only do this once, so it's uh, solar powered. And uh, your controller's in here, so you program it, and then the little eject chute is right there, so it'll be going right out here into the pond. And the way he described it to me was, I said, do the big fish eat this? He said, not necessarily, the catfish will, but when the little fish eat more protein, they grow faster and they're more protein going into the bass that eat them. Wow, shoots it all the way to the other side. Yes, sir. Over here, you'll be hard pressed to even hear it anywhere. Right. Super quiet. Nice. Nice work, man. And it's inflated. Nice work. <laughs> yes, sir.